Well, this video is about this rotary CAV injection pump that it came off a, a Toft loader. Now, a Toft loader is an Australian built cane loader that um, picked up sticks of sugar cane for the sugar cane industry in Australia and put it onto trolleys. But um, they, they use different power plants, and this particular one, it used a, an international. 434 engine in it as a power plant. So the Rum City Vintage Machinery Club, which I'm a member of, they've been donated this Toft loader. We're running through the engine and we're putting new sleeves and things like that in it. The engine has sat with water in the bores for a long time, hasn't run for ages, so we do not know what this pump's like. But because we're doing the engine, I've offered to run through the pump just reseal it, have a look inside, make sure the plungers are free in the main body here and um, go through there. So I have a Sparex seal kit, which is a favourite one I use, an S57135. Now this kit does the three cylinder pump, as in the little Perkins three cylinders, four cylinder and six cylinder CAV rotary pumps. So the pumps all look like this roughly. Um, they can have three, four or six um, outlets for injector lines. But we'll just run through this pump. Now, I'll try and not bump the camera too much, but often what I like to do is grab a 15, 16 spanner and this is the fuel inlet. So the fuel comes from the lift pump to the filters to here. So this is where it comes into the back of the pump. Now, a good thing to look at on these pumps is there's a screen in here. So you yeah, just have a fitting with a copper washer. There should be a little spring come out. That's the spring. There's a little seat on the end of the spring. But in the side here, there's a little washable filter. So normally the bottom piece doesn't come out with it. The filter just looks like that. They are a washable filter. You can wash them out and put them back together. Away you go. Well worth a look. Um, well worth a look if you're having fuel troubles, you, you have fuel coming in the pipe but you can't get it out, bleed screws and things, this could be blocked. There's a little vein pump here so that's a quick easy thing to have a look at. I'll run through a few things while we're doing the pump that you may find interesting. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, with the pumps yeah, they, from sitting they can get stuck in the metering valve in here, I'll show you that on the way through and they often from sitting or even even if they get used a lot they'll start leaking up this shaft here the throttle and the stopper shaft so we'll run through that as well but we'll just get some of the stuff that's going to be in the road out of the road and there's two bleed screws they don't always have the top one but you'll notice the thread there's a 5 16th UNF thread this thread goes right into the cam ring where this little fella up here, it should be caught a UNF. There we go, caught a UNF with a um, copper washer on it. So the caught a UNF one, it goes up to the top. So we'll get that out of the way. Take a photo of how these fittings are. Um, they're the injector line fittings. And we'll just undo them out of the way as well. I notice these have copper washers on them. Most of the kits have steel washers in there. So, simple as that. But yeah, we'll be replacing these with steel washers. They work just as well. And the reason I ask you to take a photo of your pump was um, because on the bottom of this pump we have two straight pipes which would be interchangeable but we have one with a single line on it 
and then the one on the top over the back here it comes off at right angles so the one over the back's like that just the same but shorter I mean this little fella here these are usually a bit of a bugger to do because they're so close huh, actually that looks like it's got a bend in it they're so close to the housing you can't get a ring spanner in sometimes so we'll go with that now this is just a this is where the injection pump shop locks the screws up so you can't hot them up but we know you won't hot your tractor up I'll show you how to do that later don't tell anyone their secret Okay. On the top here too they have another little wire that wires these two screws together. Um, mainly under warranty and that they didn't want you to pull the pump apart and fiddle with it and blow your engine up. This old girl will be well out of warranty only by about 40-50 years. But by the look of this tag here and this is still pretty new. Um, you know, that's the cap that stops you from opening it up so the ribs go faster. Um, it may have been done up at some stage, but I, I sort of doubt it because most of the people that do them up, they bead blast or they clean all the paint off, and I can still see red paint in here. Um, you can see the red paint on the top of the cover here. So maybe it hasn't been done. I'll just get this spring out of the way too. It's broken, so we'll have to replace that. Now what they do here sometimes is they actually, I found them to mix Imperial being CAV, <laughs> Imperial and um, metric. But anyway, we'll, we'll just see. So the two acorn nuts here, they go on the top. Um, in the description I'll put a link to a workshop manual for one of these pumps. Um, it was actually off a Land Rover, the one we're doing. We have the video off, but it's fine. It's the same thing. Okay, now, pay attention class. And I really mean pay attention here. Where you can go wrong with these pumps is there's a spring here that goes into the top cover and then there's a little rivet that holds the spring in your governor housing here. So we really need to have a look at that. Take note of where it is, it's very important. If you get that wrong, um, your pump won't work. Okay, now there's three holes in this plate and I'll put a little picture up here. You have a three holes there and this back one is in the middle hole. So I just need you to remember that for me. So there's a little rivet there. And that's what the little rivet and the, and the washer look like. I'll get the light out of the way now. It'll be a nuisance otherwise. So you have that little rivet. And then when you look at the pump, I'll just undo you off the tripod for a second. You can see those holes there. One, two, three. You see that? Yep, you should be able to see that. So this little rivet was poking forward through the middle one on my pump. That's what you need to keep in your mind. And now, on mine, while I was buggering around showing you that, the, the spring fell out of here. Now, you can see the three holes there it goes in one of those. Now, now that's fallen out because I was showing you the other. Um, how do we work out which hole it went in? Well, one way is to look down the holes and you can see that the hole on the very end there, the hole on the very end there has got a shiny piece where the spring was. Now, 
Can you see that? Just a shiny piece. That's how we'll tell there. But the other way is on this plate here, ours says 50 forward slash 900 forward slash 4 forward slash 220. Forward slash 4, that tells us where that spring went and I'll put a picture in the video here to show you that. So if you get a bit of a mischief like I just did and get talking explaining things and the spring falls off, well that's how you work out which one it is. So we'll cover the top separately but that there is your stopper. So your stop rod just pulls that and when you pull that, that um, pushes a little lever here and it shuts this metering valve off so there's no fuel gets passed. But look, we'll, we'll try and explain that as we go. This other one that I, we we're just playing with, um, that goes from this spring to here. So that all that does, it puts a bit of pressure on the governor down the bottom there. So as fast as the governor goes, the centrifugal weights throw out and that, that adjusts this. So by pulling the lever, which is your throttle lever, you put tension on that and that makes it a bit harder for it to work because of the spring tension and by putting tension on the spring that works this valve here, this, this plate, this is your main metering valve here. Now that plate there, that's the one that tells the pump what to do, how much, how much um, fuel to put out to a particular area. You'll notice that this one's nice and free. Now I've had pumps that have been sitting and people say I've, I parked the tractor up and now I can't get the tractor going again, it won't start. What happens is when it's parked up this stopper pushes that shut like that and if there's a bit of moisture down the bottom of the valve there it sticks that valve and so you can pull this back, pull the stopper back and like your stopper works on that hook so So your stopper works on the hook there and that, that little bit of movement there, that pushes your metering valve shut. And they can get rusty down the bottom there and the rust stops it and you, you open the throttle up here and because there's a spring tension there, this metering valve stays shut so no fuel comes out. So what you need to do is make sure, um, if you have a tractor that you parked up with the stopper on, and it didn't want to start, pop the top off and just check that's nice and free. It's that easy, you can pull it out quickly and, and do that, no worries at all. Okay, next cab off the rank, now this should have some fuel in here I'd imagine. I've got the clamp here so the camera can sit where it needs to and we'll probably end up with a, with a big mess. We'll just see how we go. gasket's a bit sticky. Get my trusty screwdriver here. This is the screwdriver that I bash. You'll notice rounded ends and that on it. It's a bashing screwdriver. And all you blokes who do things properly don't have bashing screwdrivers. Okay, pinky in there. Oh, it's not looking too bad. Yeah. You can see. Oh, no, you can't. Hang on a second. You can see the rusty colour of that diesel. So the fuel tank on this load is probably quite rusty. 
and that's what can stick the pump together and stop it working. Even though we have a nice, um, a nice loose metering valve, we still may have other problems once we get there. <coughs> Okay, what we might do, I'll take the camera, I'll take the plate off here, I'll put it in this vise here, and then you can actually watch me do what I do at the end there. Okay, you can see down the top now, and that was the governor flap. This is your metering valve, the one that you, you check if it's free. And this is the end, end cap here. So um, what we might do now, I've got another screwdriver that I can bash. The only screwdrivers, the screwdrivers you have seen in this video are the ones I can bash. So there's a lock tab there, and there's a lock tab on these tall fellas here. But sometimes, with the right spanner, we can just pop them out. So I think this is a quarter for this little fella at the back there on the plate that holds the metering valve in place, lock tab there, I'll find the 7 16th open in there, and these fellas here, oh it's 3 8 means, bloody hard to get good help. Give myself a good talking to about that. Okay, so these screws here, they hold the cover on, they're the studs. They can break quite easily, so don't get too excited about that. Now that plate, it just holds that holds this little plate in place those little fellas and there's a little tag on these fellas and they sit out across and when the when the stopper sits in the hole there and we move the stopper back and forth yep yeah, move the stopper back and forth these little tabs on the lock tabs there they hold it from kicking up out of the way. So you can sort of see how the stopper works when you push the stopper. You pull that and away that goes and that shuts the metering valve off. So anyway, I'll try and cover that a bit better. We're puddling along a bit. You can hear I've just got a Makita battery charged over in the background. And that there is your metering valve. That's what it looks like. It's got a little slot here and you can see a little screw, a little, oh, little feathering piece there. Now, depending on how much this opens up down the hole there in the head um, to how much fuel you get. There's no need to touch any of this. Keep all that together like that. There's a little spring under there. Um, just keep it in one piece. There's no need to fiddle. There's no need to adjust this screw here. It'll be as it was from factory. It'll be fine. So if you're happy how the tractor worked before, or the engine worked before, don't muck with that, and just, just leave it alone. Now, this is just a, a case drain, the 5.8 spanner fits that, that just goes back. That's the return line, and that goes back from your pump, any extra pressure in here goes up and back through, and it often hooks up to the top of your injectors, and it ends up back in the fuel tank, or back on the top of the filter housing. This little fella here, this is your vein pump. Now, it gets a bit involved in here with the little shuttle. We'll try and run through that if we can. I noticed that this end piece come out before. Now this end piece, it's the one on the end of the, the washable filter. There's a little shuttle in there and the little shuttle must move freely in there under its own weight and it's stuck down the hole here and there's a little spring down the bottom so when we get it off 
we hold it over the bench before we tip it upside down. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, that's the end of your vein pump. You can see a little roll pin there. That little roll pin sits on this side of the vein. Now, depending on which side, which direction the pump turns to what, end, what side that will be. But on ours, it's there. There's no need to play with that. Like, that's just fine. Now, when we look inside here, That's that little shuttle I've been talking about. It has to sit up in here when it's clean and it has to go up and down inside there under its own weight. Okay, now the veins in here, the veins are replaceable, they're a wearing part. They just go together like that. So they just sit together like that so they have movement back and forth as, as the pump turns. I probably should have showed you that earlier. And there's a big rubber in here. It's a big quad ring. And that quad ring, it seals on the end of this cap here so it doesn't leak. Okay. Now under the pump here there's two screws. One of them's just a case drain but there's a big one underneath there. I'll see if I can show you those. Okay, that's those two there. Um, this is just a drain. That holds the cam ring in, and this holds the cam ring in, and the big, um, the big bleeder that we took out before, it holds the cam ring in up here. So you have one screw coming in at, say, 10 o'clock, one at 2 o'clock, and one at 6 o'clock, underneath holding the head in. Um, sort of the cam ring really that's um well these these hold the head in and that little one there the the front one there holds the cam ring in but we'll get to that in a moment um don't get too excited so they're pretty easy to pull apart these pumps eh? then I'll just tip all the fuel out of there now one thing we need to look at, and I'll try and get the camera set up. Okay, on these pumps, normally, I'll try and get this where it'll hold a decent light. In these pumps, normally to time them, to time them, you look inside here, then down in here you'll see the end of a circlip, and the end of the circlip, the flat part on the circlip, lines up with a certain letter. Like we have letter F there that you can see. E, O, C, 8, A. That's where you can hot him up. We won't talk about that. And usually there's a, a the end of a circlip here. And there's a flat end to the circlip and a rounded end to the circlip you can normally see in there you can normally see in there and that's where you pop this plate off the side to time the pump with your engine but someone has been in here and that's not lined up at all so we're going to have to work out number one and we'll have to work that out going back together no big deal but we need to sort it out another thing we need to do while we're up well, we have the pump sitting how it is, is if for some reason 
your injection pump has been leaking diesel into the engine and you've had a look at the um, the, the cold start on the manifold, make sure it's not leaking. You've had a look at the fuel lift pump and this is the last cab off the rank. Well you need to replace this front gearbox seal. Now, it can be, well what I often do, I just get a, where you have this little flat here, if you hold them with a big set of multis, multi grips, you can actually hold on to that flat. So that holds the flat. Then you can get a 15, a 5 16th Allen key. And undo the cap at the end. Now, I'll get this out of the way. Okay, we have the screw. Which is Oh shit, sorry about that, which is 3.8 UNF. Then we have a little spring, that's your spring washer, it's a funny looking little fella. And then down the bottom there, there's a little washer that's an odd shape, sometimes it doesn't want to come out. On the oil, on the transfer pump on the end, this little Just go and crook it on me. Something going on there. There we go. That should be a nice, easy fit in there. You can see a witness mark on the end there. And that lined up with the port down the bottom. Now this here, I do have a special socket I've made for this. Don't try and undo it if you don't have to, uh, most times you don't have to and it's left hand thread if you do but if you put something in there, put a screwdriver in and you try hard and undo it, um, these break off. So just, just don't do that. There's no need just resealing the pump to do that so we can leave that be. Now what I'd like to do, I can probably sit him up this way again. Right, so I said before that the, the big bleed screw came in here and it held the, the head in. This is the head, this main part here. <coughs> we need a 5 8 spanner underneath to undo the big bolt. Sometimes on the later pumps there's like a hydraulic advance, but this old girl hasn't got that, so we'll just undo that one. That's what it looks like. And this fella here. That has a copper washer on it. So they hold the head in place. This is the head. So I'll just see if I can. If the O ring's leaking around here, which it often is, this is the job you have to do. Now don't worry about timing or anything, it's, um, it's got a master spline. Now if it's been dripping from around here, that's the o-ring. That's the o-ring there that will be leaking. That follow there, tiny little thing. Now people ask me, can you undo these screws and slide that head out enough to replace the o-ring on the tractor? you probably can. Um, we've lost drive there but you know if you if you only pulled it out a millimetre or two you may get away with that. Um, I think you can see the groove just there. Yeah, You may get away with it but but this should just pull out. There we go. 
So that's your head. There's some little rollers there. We'll go through this on the bench. And this little hole here, that one there, when we go back to the metering valve, that's where the metering valve sits. He sits in there and opens up the amount of fuel that the pump can actually have to pump. But look, we'll, we'll wash all this up and we'll go through this separately. Okay, now you'll see this fella here. That's the cam track. And that might help you see it better. You see it's an odd shape. And these little rollers, they actually run around in that cam. They have fuel pressure comes in through the centre here, pushes, pushes the rollers out hard against that. So that cam track, you'll notice an arrow on it. There's an arrow there that is facing that way. That must go in the right way. So we'll get rid of the light. This next screw down the bottom here, it's the one that holds the cam track in. It's a snug fit in the housing. In that cam track, you can see how loose it is. So the thing to take note of there is this arrow. Now, there's nothing, no marks there. No marks where the circlip's been or anything. So there you go. So this is a pump a bit different to some because often there's a circlip in here. I'm um, sitting up against that shoulder and you can see the mark on it where it goes. But for some reason, this one doesn't have that, which is a bit different for me and not something I'd normally see. So all we have to do to remember this is that arrow goes that way you've got to be able to see the arrow and you can't go wrong there's only one hole bolts it in you do have to have a look around here if the hardening's gone in here that's not the best but look if it's an old shit box just go with it eh? go with the flow because your pump will be buggered anyway so okay so that's about all we need to undo. I will take it out of here because we're going to sandblast the housing. Um, I'll get the rest of it. I'll get the pump off the bracket here. We need an empty housing to sandblast it and clean it up properly and we usually start right from scratch. Pulling apart is the easy bit. Oh well it's all easy really, it's just knowing what to look for. I've, hopefully I've pointed out what you need to just keep an eye out for popping it apart. There's a video I've done on these same pumps but it's a three cylinder pump and it's in, in the Massey Ferguson 135 six speed playlist I've done video 14 and 15 and then oh that's bloody tight might be tight on the seal I'll bring you around a bit might just see if that'll there we go Now in there, in their guts, there's a little washer with two flats on it and it stays in there until you go over to the parts washer then it falls out then you wonder where it's from. Okay, we'll have a look at that later. Now the main seal, this, oh, that is the main seal that That's the main seal that seals diesel from coming from this housing here into your sump and that is hard as, rock solid. 
you can see it broke it didn't it didn't um, just slide out so that's easy done now this bit here this is your basket now your governor housing you can see on this piece here that goes up and down so the faster the pump goes it comes out here the the weights throw out and as they throw out they work on that then this the two little flats here they sit on the two little flats there so as this moves in and out it pivots on this point here and that decides how much fuel gets opened or gets used so so there's an o-ring in under there um, yeah up in here that's a little o-ring there's an o-ring there that needs replacing and that o-ring once you get that o-ring off can you see the o-ring there oh it's a bit hard to see isn't it really it's got a bit of oil and a bit of black shit in here but there's the o-ring there once that o-ring's off this whole thing comes apart but that o-ring there it seals in there so that seals the that's master spline so I can go only, only go on one way see the the big fat spline there and the big fat spine there there so the o-ring just seals in the front of that and the other seal seals outside here this needs a polish up so so when we wash it that'll all come apart I'll leave it there for the moment because they fall apart and they're hard to get back together oh well not really a bit of a handful but look that's stripping the pump um, all right, we'll wash some of this up. I don't know whether it'll be in this video. Probably the next video, I'd say. We'll slowly work through each piece as we put it back into the housing. We'll take the housing, we'll clean it all up. We'll get all the paint off. We'll bring it back to looking like new. And we'll clean the parts up. And as we go, we'll talk about each part while we go together.